A very warm welcome to you. This is Business Daily on Trust TV, where we bring you updates and trends in the world of business, finance, and of course, the Nigerian economy. My name is Chiamaka Enendu, and as usual, we are set to do that on today's edition of the program. But first of all, let's take a look at the top stories this hour. And right about now, let's take a look at how the markets um, ended yesterday, the 3rd of January 2024. I almost said 2023 there, I guess. We are now in the fiscal year of 2024, of course, where we did see the markets continue, sustain the bullish trend that we have seen it have since the start of the year. And even at the close of December, we saw the All Share Index up by 2.04% at 77,539 Three, that is the All Share Index. And on the other hand, the market capitalization hit 42.42 trillion naira. And we've seen the markets, like I said, have a sustained increase in the market cap, hitting 42.42 trillion naira after the end of yesterday's trading. The market volume also grew yesterday up to 927.558 million, while the market value hit 10.69 billion naira. And I must say that the market value has continued to rise from about nine point yesterday and six point two days ago to 10.69 billion in yesterday's trading. And the number of deals, of course, rose by over 2,000 yesterday, hitting 11,629 deals on the floor of the exchange in one day. Away from that now, let's take a look at the top gainers. Speaking of the stocks that recorded top gains on the floor of the exchange yesterday. And we'll begin with Dangote Sugar up by 10.00%, selling for 63.23 Naira. That's 63 Naira 25 Kobo. And Nascon followed closely up also by 10.00% at 59.40. And the UBA for the banking sector, UBA a is there representing up by 10.00 percent at 28.60 and there you have it the top gainers from yesterday let's take a look at the flip side speaking of the top losers the bottom losers i beg your pardon where we saw about seven just seven stocks emerge as or lost yesterday with over 78 stocks gaining so yesterday we must say was very profitable so on the flip side uh, learn africa emerged as the top loser down by 9.09 percent selling at 2 naira 90 cobo while champions followed closely down by 7.32 percent selling at 3 naira 80 cobo and sial leasing also followed 
suit on the losing charts down by 2.33 percent selling for five naira uh, three cobo and away from the losers charts now let's take a look at the major market movers and top trades from yesterday and we are seeing uh if you notice you would see that all of the major market movers are banking stocks. So the banking sector has been flourishing since the year commenced. And we're seeing Fidelity Bank top the chart with over 108 million shares exchanged on the floor of the exchange on the 3rd of January. And closely followed by FCMB Group with 79.1 million shares. And the United Bank for Africa is the third on that list at 55.5 million shares and now to the sectoral performance taking a look at major sectors and just how well they performed yesterday let's start off with the banking sector topping that uh, the, the banking sector on the chat like i said yes i said earlier we saw uh, the, the 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 banking stocks emerge as top gainers and top movers yesterday and we can see that the banking sector was up by 6.66 percent that's some tremendous growth recorded in just one day and the, the ngx industrial sector was also up by 0.31 percent the ngx consumer goods also ended in the bull trend at by uh, by 2.42 percent and the ngx oil and gas seems to also have uh, reason compared to what we had seen in uh, two days or two trading sessions ago up by 1.89 percent while the ngx insurance also ended the day in the positive up by 5.50 percent so a sea of greens all greens recorded yesterday on the floor of the exchange but the question is do we expect to see a sustained bullish trend well we will be on the lookout to see just how the sectors will be performing at the end of today's section but away from nigeria now let's take a look at uh, other major markets across africa speaking of the johannesburg stock exchange the nairobi securities exchange and the Ghanaian stock exchange and starting off with the johannesburg stock exchange one of the major markets within africa which was up by 0.47 percent at 74,510.72 and that is uh that is it for the Johannesburg stock exchange and for Ghana stock exchange also ending in the bullish in the positive up uh, by 0.00 percent the Ghanaian stock exchange has retained that position for quite a long time now at 3,130.23 and for the Nairobi Stock Exchange a pretty small uh, market in the eastern part of Africa however has done tremendously well is up by 0.2 percent at 92.11 uh, for yesterday again a sea of greens and uh, we are seeing that's not just a, not just happening within the southeast and west africa but that is also playing out in the northern region of africa well at this point uh, there you have it for the stock markets review but we will go on a short break and when we return we will begin our, co our conversation proper and i do expect for financial analyst Stephen wachiko to join us on the program and we'll be taking a look at the outlook for nigeria's uh, stock market that is the ngx taking a look at just what to expect in the first quarter at least for the, the stock market and the entire fiscal year of 2024. So do stay
and you are still on to Business Daily on Trust Television. And the Nigeria stock market, that is the NGX, had a good run in the year 2023. We saw the OSHA index finally surpassing the 70,000 mark that he had, you know, gone around for a while and eventually surpassed that mark. And we also did see it end in the bullish trend and start the year 2024 in the bullish trend as well. But how sustainable is this and what should we expect from the NGX, at least for the first quarter of the year and in the long run, the entire 2024? Joining me now to discuss the outlook for Nigeria stock market is Steve Mwachiko, who is a financial analyst. He is also an investment analyst and he's joining me from Emo State. Hello, Mr. Steve, and thank you for joining us on the program. Hello, good morning and happy new year. Happy New Year to you too. And like I said in my introduction, the year has started in the in the positive. We have seen the Nigeria uh, NGX, of course, end the year 2023 in the bullish trend and start the year in the bullish trend as well. What are investors expecting? Are they expecting for the market to sustain the bullish trend? What are the conversations going on around, you know, among stakeholders when it comes to the NGX? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I think first and foremost, it speaks the expectation of stakeholders, uh, both operators, investors, and the rest, that the market will also turn uh, or close the year on the positive trend, just like a witness uh, that of 2023, where market closed above 30 percent. Remember, in 2022, uh, there about yeah, 2020, when we had the COVID. The market also surpassed 50 percent uh, increase in, at the end of 2022. So, uh, one thing is certain: the Nigerian market is one of the very best markets uh, in the world in the sense that the return on investment is there. Yeah, those things that will attract investors that will continue to push prices up. The bottom line. The top line of the quoted stocks at the floor of Nigerian stock exchanges are all doing uh, extensively well. So the market breadth is also expected to reflect on that as investors continue to check a few stocks uh, that is profitable, that has a good history of dividend payment. So, yes, uh, in this first quarter of the year or the first month of the year, it is expected that the market will age up given the fact that Investors are looking up to supported stocks that will be paying, declaring their dividend as a result of the year end of 2023. So, and you know for sure that January, uh, early weeks, and you know, the entire January is the time investors will start taking such positions to position themselves for such dividend payments or possibly uh, bonus credit. Okay, let's talk about the recent appointments that we have seen in the, within the NGX, that is the appointment of Temi Popola as the GMD uh, CEO and also the appointment of Jude Chiemeka as the acting CEO. How much of an impact has this or have these appointments had with regards to the market sentiment? Oh, yes, it takes. Uh, you know, uh, markets continue to expect such kind of development. Uh, the appointment of the the group GMD as a result of the retirement of uh, due of uh, Oscar Onyema, who is due to retire and he's really uh, affecting the uh, management level of uh, the board chairman and the rest of them. So it's expected that those key individuals who also are key players migrate upward to also foresee the activities in the market. So it's expected that the market will react positively, uh, react positively to the good news that is not just like people who are just coming from nowhere is, uh, you know, heading such position. It's also individuals who also there and has been participating in the market, who has a uh, long run experience in the market over two decades. In, uh, uh, in the market. So they will do best to also provide much of the ineffective ideas that is needed to prepare the market up. So it's a good news that this very transition happens seamlessly.
Okay, let's speak to issues around the market, you know, um, adjusting or adapting to the current macroeconomic realities. Talking about the high interest rates, high inflation and the likes. Do we expect for the markets to continue with the positive adaptation that we have seen it sustain for quite a while now? Or what should we look forward to? Oh, uh, like I said, fortunately and unfortunately, the market has been reacting to most of these uh, economic, macroeconomic decisions of this new political dispensation that is being headed by uh, President Paul Ahmed Tinubu. A few of his decisions have rubbed off on the market. Some are also have given some level of momentum in the market. The issues around recapitalization by CPN is actually, you know, driving some of the banking stocks. Is it due to have done the recapitalization? Yes, it's overdue to also, you know, lift up the capitalization of the quoted of commercial banks. So uh, those policies and around the flotation policies, the removal of wealth subsidy, has their pros and cons. They have positive and negative to the market. Some it has really impacted positively in the top line and bottom line of sub company, and some are also recording losses as the result of the loss in their forest uh, position. So uh, it's not actually like it's all good for the market. But like I said, the market is reacting to such development, and some are quite positive to the market, and some are rubbing off some uh, advantages of some of them who have the forest differences. Let's speak um, particularly about the commodities market. We have seen the oil and gas sector rally for quite a while now. And moving forward, we do expect for Dangote to, the Dangote refinery specifically to, you know, list on the, on the NGX, on the Nigeria Stock Exchange. Do we foresee for the continual oil and gas sector rally or what should we expect following the listing of dangote refinery on the ngx yes it's expected and i have listened also to the management of dangote promising dangote refinery promising as soon as they start operation they will be listed that would be a huge positive to the market. The market is still within less than 40 trillion capitalization, which is somewhere uh, less than less than 40 billion or 45 billion dollars. So uh, we still have relatively very small uh, capital market. So we need some good listings like the Dangote refinery, even like the NNPC that is also being parted that in the couple of days to come or months to come, NNPC will be listed because they have the, the, the total deregulation of the uh, oil and gas, which resulted in the commercialization of the NNPC activities, which can give them that room to be quoted at the floor of Nigerian stock. It's a, such kind of listing is expected that, so that they can boost the market and boost the liquidity in the market. So uh, that would be a very good uh, gift for the market if we have such uh, highly blue chip, capitalized stocks or companies like Dangote Refinery and NNPC being quoted at the floor of Nigerian stock. So the news is still featuring around the corridors of the market, and we are for optimal hope that in the weeks or months to come, such institutions will have the privilege to be traded. Uh, their shares will have, will have the privilege to trade their shares at the floor of Nigerian stock. And it will be that good for the market. Well, still on the commodities market, you've talked about the oil rally that might be expected if Dangote refinery, of course, list on the NGX. But aside that, let's talk about oil prices. We've seen oil prices, you know, increase for a while now. And there is a lot going on within that within that um, within that sector, you know, the oil output, the oil prices, oil production discussions and all of that. But what should we look forward to going into 2024, especially with all that we expect to happen and play out this year from the elections coming from the United States, you know, the war in Ukraine and all of that put together. What should uh, Nigeria expect? Because of obviously this international event have a way of trickling down to Nigeria. But what should we look forward to? Yes, uh, most of the macroeconomic issues around and even in the around the globe has a one way or the other to that will reflect in our market. Also, have one way or the other to affect the economy of just like you talked about the election in the US, uh, the rising inflation rate, even the global oil market prices, and a couple other issues that has one way or the other will wrap up on Nigerian economy. 
take, for instance, the issue of the international selling price of crude oil as a way of also boosting the price continues to rally around somewhere around or above a hundred dollar per barrel. That would be huge positive for Nigeria because we'll be having a lot of revenues to meet the budget expectations or the budget line items. Then if it's also forced, that would be a lot of uh, burden on Nigeria or the government to implement the 2024 budget. So uh, it has its pros and cons too. Just like you talked about the election, the U.S. reserve even rates and the rest of them, and they are increasingly, you know, reducing it, and that's a positive for us because once they continue to reduce or their inflation rate continues to drop, like we saw the last figure from the British or from the Britain, it's somewhere less than five uh, percent or thereabouts. So if such inflation continues to drop, it means that capital are flowing out of such. Uh, capitalized or uh, 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 industrialized market to an emerging market like Nigeria. So uh, it's positive for us in the sense that such funds will start looking for uh, countries like Nigeria where they can exploit and have a good return on their investment. So, but a lot is needed of us also to put things in order in, around our exchange market, around insecurity. So we can wrap up or, or we can rip off from this very uh, positives that will be coming from the international space. And um, there's a lot of conversation around sustaining investors' confidence. That is ensuring that Nigeria can attract as much FDI as possible. We have heard from our president during his uh, New Year's uh, broadcast. He talked about how Nigeria is ready for business. Let's talk about infrastructure, you know, to ensure that Nigeria indeed, you know, is able to provide as much foreign direct investment as possible. How much of an infrastructural gap is Nigeria still experiencing? We've heard from the World Bank that says it may take Nigeria up to 300 years to breach that infrastructure gap. Well, let's speak to issues around infrastructure deficiency in Nigeria. Of course, the lot. We have a lot of infrastructure deficiency. In fact, there was a statistics or data that was a research that was made at the Nigeria need around 100 to two, 150 billion dollars, one to 150 billion dollars annually to fix most of these infrastructure decades. So, and imagine our budget size for 2024 is still uh, less than 40 billion dollars. So we have a lot of issues. And when we put our house in order, that's why we can ask for good leadership for less some level of security. Once you have some level of security, it gives investors opportunities, the confidence, and that's very trust also to invest in most of these critical national infrastructure. So that's why we continue to call on the government that they should have this posture that could attract these foreign investors that will fix most of these infrastructural decades around our airport, around our roads, some incentives or even bilaterals that could also fix some of these infrastructures in telecommunications, name it, all run sectors of the Nigerian economy. So we need a huge investment, and these investments cannot come within. It can only come from our side, because we are talking about billions, hundreds of billions of dollars investment that is needed to be popping, even in our health sector. So we need a lot of foreign uh, participation. We need a lot of agreement, bilateral, and the rest of them to fix those very decaying infrastructure, even in our education. Thank you. Well, this is a conversation that we could go on and on and on. However, our time is far spent. Stephen Wachiko, the financial analyst, speaking to issues around what to expect with the NGX for the year 2024. Thank you, Steve, for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you for having me. And this is the point where we draw the curtains on today's edition of Business Daily on Trust TV. But we will be back again with you tomorrow. So do well to join us again. My name is Chiamaka Nendu. Thank you for watching.